in section 12.9, we are exploring curvature and the principal unit normal vector. So to get us started, we are looking at a introduction to curvature, which is defined by the Greek letter kappa. So to begin, let's let C be a smooth curve parameterized by the vector valued function R of T for some arbitrary parameter T. So, I want you to recall that the unit tangent vector, capital vector T, is a vector of length 1 pointing in the direction of our tangent vector. So let's think about a graphical interpretation. So say this is our curve parameterized by the vector valued function R of T, and let's indicate the direction on our curve. Now, for some point on this curve, we'll say point P here, the unit tangent vector is a vector of length 1 pointing in the direction the curve is moving at any given point. And we, of course, know that our unit tangent vector is defined as the tangent vector divided by the magnitude of our tangent vector. And again, this is a vector that points in the direction the curve is moving at any given point. So capital T is a vector that points in the direction that the curve C is moving at any given point on the curve. So we can now go ahead and use this understanding of our unit tangent vector to help us establish a intuitive definition for curvature. So I want you to note that how quickly your unit tangent vector changes direction as we move along the parameterized curve at any given point is measured by the curvature. So the fact that we're defining this as how quickly your unit tangent vector changes direction indicates to us that our curvature k is going to be a non-negative scalar. So kappa is an element of the real numbers such that kappa is greater than or equal to zero. So we can define kappa, our non-negative scalar, as the magnitude of the rate at which your unit tangent vector changes with respect to the arc length. So we have kappa is equal to, or your curvature is equal to, the magnitude of the rate at which your unit tangent vector changes with respect to the arc length. So we could also use our differential notation. And of course, we want to keep in mind here that this is where s is your arc length. So the curvature is the magnitude, a non-negative scalar, defined as the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes with respect to our arc length. And this is our intuitive understanding of curvature. So let's go ahead now and use this intuitive definition to help us appreciate what the different cases of curvature is going to tell us about the curve. So here is our geometric interpretation of the intuitive definition of curvature. So I want you to keep in mind that curvature measures how sharply a curve is turning at some point on the curve. And we say that this is defined as that non-negative scalar kappa, which is equal to the magnitude of the rate at which the unit tangent vector changes with respect to arc length. So keep in mind that the unit tangent vector is a vector at some point on the curve that depends on the orientation of the curve. However, curvature doesn't depend on the orientation of the curve. It depends on the shape of the curve, and it's measuring how sharply the curve is turning at some point on the curve. So let's use this intuitive definition to think about what the curvature is going to tell us about the curve itself. So we want to think about when you have a large curvature, what does that tell you about the curve? We want to think about, well, what if we have a small curvature? What does that tell us about the curve? What about if curvature is zero? So here we go. Case number one. If the curvature measures to a large number, 
a large value for kappa at some point indicates a tight curve that changes direction quickly. So something like this. So here is our curve C, and we can see that at some point on the curve that this is changing direction quickly. Look at how at these different points on the curve, how quickly that unit tangent vector is changing direction. So a large curvature at a point indicates a tight curve moving direction quickly. So a large curvature lets us know that the curve itself is a tight curve and that it's changing direction quickly. Now case number two. If our curvature kappa is measured to be a small non-negative scalar, then this implies that the curve is a relatively flat curve and it changes direction slowly. So something like this. So notice here, for any point on the curve, that your unit tangent vector is changing direction relatively slowly. So a small curvature indicates a relatively flat curve that changes direction slowly. And last but not least, what does zero curvature tell us about the curve? Well, looking at these two previous cases, this is telling us that the curve is a straight line. So here is our curve C, and you can see that everywhere on this line, we'll have the same curvature, zero. So if curvature measures to be zero, this indicates a straight line. That's a straight line for your curve C. So, all we have thus far is our intuitive definition, which is the definition defined in terms of arc length. But most of the time, we won't be so lucky to have a curve parametrized in terms of arc length. So we need to now take this intuitive definition and use it to establish a computation definition for an arbitrary parameter t.